This is a general installation guide only. Aurora cannot anticipate every possible circumstance that might involve a hazard. Do not install or operate a generator without thorough knowledge and compliance with standard operating procedures, applicable codes, and regulations. Generators should be installed by a competent, qualified electrician or installation technician who is familiar with all the applicable codes, standards, and regulations. In this installation guide, we'll cover Aurora generators between 4 kW and 20 kW in size. When you receive your generator, it should look like this. The generators are bolted to a wooden pallet before shipping. There's a heavy plastic bag wrapping it and a cardboard box covering it. Inside the generator, you'll find a bag that contains keys, paperwork, and a USB drive that contains detailed manuals and instructions. The manuals are for the controller, the engine, the alternator, as well as any other accessories. Be sure to check the manufacturer from time to time for updates if they become available. Generators can start automatically when triggered by a transfer switch or other two wire remote starting system. They can also start for a programmed exercise cycle or a low battery voltage condition. Optional accessories such as remote monitoring and control may also trigger the generator to start. So it is important when installing or performing maintenance on a generator to always disconnect the starter battery and also disconnect any power from an external source that is powering your accessories. Generators should be installed with enough room around all sides that you can easily access the generator for maintenance when it's required. You must comply with all code requirements for minimum distances from combustible walls and building openings. For best results, install a generator on a concrete pad or a base slab that can support the generator and its accessories. A proper foundation is needed to resist dynamic loading and reduce transmitted noise and vibration. The exact composition of the mounting pad must follow standard engineering practices for the required loading and application. Securely fasten the generator to the foundation using a suitable grade, grade size and style fastener. There are holes on the steel frame for this purpose. Airflow travels through the generator, across the engine, through the alternator, and then out through the exhaust ducting. The adequate and unobstructed flow of cooling and ventilating air is critical to prevent the buildup of heat, exhaust gases, and to ensure safe generator operation. Ensure that there's no obstructions and keep the area around the generator clean and uncluttered. And remove any materials that may pose a hazard. Provisions should be made to receive electrical conduit and control wiring up through the base, the stub up area. It is preferred to have the stub up location placed near the generator's load and control panel connections. It is acceptable, however, to add holes and run conduit through the canopy enclosure. Here's a general CAD drawing of what the generator looks like without the canopy enclosure. On the right hand side would be the uh, fuel tank sitting underneath the alternator and the uh, control panel right next to it and then you've got the engine just forward of that. Um, see there's a bit of space in behind uh, the alternator in this particular drawing uh, It's because it's a 6 or 8 kilowatt generator. Uh, the other ones don't have as much space back there but gives you an idea when you're doing your wiring where you want to come up from and into. On the side of the controller you can see it's labeled customer wiring to load uh, you'd run your conduit out through there. Here we're looking at the same generator, this time with a canopy enclosure on it. It is still 33 by 57 inches for the footprint, same base being used. The canopy enclosure, however, makes it 44 inches in height. Still nice small package. If you look at the bottom illustration, you'll see the anchor points um, if you're bolting it down. And you can also see the fuel tank 
where you can run wiring if necessary just in front of it or behind it. It's also acceptable to go in through the side of the canopy if it makes your job or installation any easier. To ensure personal safety and prevent damage to the generator, use only personnel experienced with rigging, lifting, and moving heavy machinery. Use a spreader bar to avoid scratching painted surfaces or damaging the generator. Do not use the lifting points on the engine or alternator to move the generator set. When installing a transfer switch, use its standard two-wire dry contact. Connect one wire to ground, that's terminal 9, and the other to the start-stop signal, terminal number 6. When the generator is set to auto, the opening and closing of this connection will start and stop the generator automatically. Unlike portable generators, standby generators use a floating neutral. Neutral is not bonded to ground. If you wish to bond the neutral to ground for portable use, that's acceptable. Connect the load to the main circuit breaker through the bottom of the unused terminals on the circuit breaker. When you open up the control panel, you will see this. Connect the neutral to the neutral bar next to the circuit breaker. That should also be labeled and obvious. The ground should be connected to the generator frame. Antifreeze coolant or coolant not only protects the engine from freezing in the winter months, but it also helps protect diesel engines from common cavitation issues. Make sure you use coolant designed specifically for diesel engines only. These often contain supplemental coolant additives or SCAs. It is not the same coolant that's used on a gasoline engine. Diesel oil is the oil you use to lubricate your engine and should not be confused with fuel oil. Diesel engines require a different type of oil that is specifically designed for the diesel engine, not gasoline engines. Diesel engine oils contain more additives because they're subject to harsher operating conditions. And the most common type of diesel engine oil is 5W40, but check your engine manual there are different oils for different climates. The next step should be adding diesel fuel. Add diesel fuel, but do not overfill the tank. Keeping the tank full, however, will help displace air that will condense and cause water to accumulate in the tank. That would like to avoid. If using your own tank, be sure to use a water separator. Water and fuel oil do not mix, and they're damaging to the engine. Anytime the generator is run out of fuel or is being set up for the first time, you'll need to prime the fuel, the fuel system. Priming is the process of removing air from the fuel lines and replacing it with fuel. Air compresses and prevents the fuel pump from working. It can also damage fuel injectors. A priming ball draws fuel from the tank and pumps it through the fuel lines and through the pump and back to the fuel tank again. It works by squeezing and releasing the bulb. You can hear and feel the difference when air is removed from it. An engine that's sitting and unused for long periods of time may need to be primed as well. Check valves that help prevent fuel from running back to the fuel tank over time can leak and air can be introduced, making it necessary to repeat this process. Aurora generators that have fuel tanks in them have this electronic and mechanical fuel level sensor built in as well. The controller can be set to warn when the fuel level gets low and also be set to shut the engine off before it's empty. It's preferred to see a warning and the engine shut off on you before you're empty so you don't have to prime the fuel system to get air out if you ran out of fuel. You see the error message, you fill up fuel, you press the start button, and you're back up and running again. The final step is to connect the starter battery. Connect the positive, the red cable, first, and then connect the black, negative cable. Grab hold of the connector and see if you can turn it by hand. If you can turn the battery cable by hand, it's not tight enough. 
Before you can use the generator, you need to have a basic understanding of the generator controller. The generator controller is kind of the heart of the generator. It provides complete control, starting and stopping and protection, as well as instrumentation. For automatic generator operation, if you're using a transfer switch, the controller should be left on all the time. There's a key switch beside the controller that's not for cranking, it's a power switch to turn the controller power on and off. If you're not going to use a generator for a long time, turn the power off. It's not going to drain the battery. If you leave it on, it's going to use about 50 milliamp um, draw on the battery, and over time the battery will uh, discharge. The battery will self-discharge anyway over time, so it's best to have a, a, either an exercise cycle where the engine can run long enough to recharge the battery, or even better, a small trickle charger connected to the generator to keep it uh, topped up and so that the controller does not drain the battery over time. There's a lot of features and functions on the controller, but the main ones are to start and stop your generator, to monitor and protect it. Uh, there are two basic modes, manual and automatic. Manual is very simple, just like it sounds. Press the green run button to start the generator and press the red off button to turn off the generator. If you're using an automatic transfer switch or anything that's going to tell a generator to turn on and off remotely, that's uh, automatic mode. Press the white A, automatic, to put it into automatic mode. Pressing off will take it out of automatic mode. There's a lot of programmable timers and delays and exercise, alarms, warning levels. Hopefully nobody gets in there and tinkers with that, but if you do, it's best first to make a copy of your settings that's done easily through free software that'll let you configure the controller. Best to first make a copy of it, download it from the controller, and then if ever necessary, you can send that information back to the controller and not have to spend hours reprogramming it. It is field programmable. You don't have to use software to do it. You can do it all through the keys in the menu system. But password protect it. By default, the password is four zeros, and that stops people from going into menus and changing things that shouldn't be changed. Um, if you want to change the password, that's fine. We don't know the password. If you change it, best to keep it by default four zeros, uh, or check with us. Many times we also have a copy of the uh, settings that we uh, put into the controller before we ship the generator out. When the generator is running or in automatic mode, you see a few screens scrolling by and they show you things like the output voltage, generator frequency, current, it's optional because it requires current transformers. That's an accessory you can have added to your generator. Oil pressure, um, engine temperature, fuel level, generator running time, engine hours, engine RPM, battery voltage, and custom sensors if you have those uh, installed, any other temperature sensors or some other accessory. This is something we see often. People uh, see an amber light and they think there's a warning. It is a warning. It's a warning telling you that you're not in automatic mode. You're in manual mode. Most people use their generators in automatic mode. This is just to let you know, hey, you forgot to put it in auto and the start is enabled. You can't press start to start it. Uh, all you got to do is press the auto button, this message goes away, and your warning light goes uh, gets uh, turned off as well. Can't stress this enough, before you make any customization or make any changes to the controller, read the manual. The most common cause of a generator not working is from the end user making changes to settings. That's why it's password protected, to protect the controller settings or the menus from being accessed and uh, something changed accidentally. Download the software, it's free. There's free software for this controller using a, a USB cable. You can back up the settings before you begin and you can always send them back to the controller or reconfigure something if you really want to, but there is no need to do that. Just be careful, the warranty will not cover reprogramming and if settings are lost or, or changes are made that are would negatively affect the safety or operation of the generator, you don't want to do that. There's really no need to change anything, perhaps reset a timer or change, uh, um, don't want somebody affecting how long the generator cranks or how many times it'll try to start. 
Um, there's some things that are critical. You could, by mistake, uh, disable a sensor. Those things should not be uh, tinkered with, but it's sure nice to understand and have a better idea of what the generator does. So, sure, review what's in the menu and what the settings are, but be careful with what changes you make. Some of the menus you go into once you've entered a password and you're into the programming side of the controller, they have no back option. People get stuck and they don't know what to do and they select something and ca causes a problem. Uh, if there's no back option available, scroll up and down, look for a little check mark that, that is next to what is currently selected and select it again. Press enter a second time to confirm those changes even though it's not a change, and save that selection to get out of the menu. This is where people make most of the mistakes is they don't know what to select and they by mistake change something and bump it out of uh, uh, where it was supposed to be. In this screen you can see the generator is running. It says manual run. There's a little lock symbol. That means we've pressed the enter button and stopped the display from scrolling. It's been running for 2.3 hours and the engine has been running in total for 3,495.6 hours. Um, if you need to shut the generator off, press the off button. Do not use the key switch to shut the generator off. That will shut off. It's, it's equivalent to unplugging a computer instead of shutting it down properly. We'd like to record that the engine shut off and certain things to happen when it shuts off rather than just killing the power to it. When the generator is running or in automatic mode, the display is in, let's call it uh, instrumentation mode. It's showing you uh, different uh, settings or values and it will continue to cycle through different screens every couple of seconds. How long it stays on each screen, that's something that you can set up and you can change that amount of time, it's user configurable. Um, if you need to stop it and you want to monitor, let's say the engine speed or the voltage, press the enter button, a little lock symbol shows up and freezes the display and uh, uh, it will stay there as long as necessary and you press the enter button again and that lock symbol will disappear and it uh, will go on to the next screen and continue to cycle through them. When you go to start your generator and you press the run button or it's automatically starting, you'll first hear this big clunk that's the glow plug power relay turning on. That powers the, uh, the glow plugs for cold weather starting. That's a normal sound and it doesn't crank right away. It'll stay on for about eight seconds and then that relay will disengage and the generator will crank. During that time, you will see most likely a warning that the battery voltage is low. That's normal, it's an indication that the glow plug heaters have turned on and that warning goes away when the engine is running and the battery starts to recharge. If everything is okay, the generator normally starts the first time and doesn't crank for more than a couple of seconds. But if it fails to start for some reason, an important thing to remember is the controller is programmed to try again a second and third time. So if you're doing any troubleshooting or working around a generator, be sure to press the off button to stop it from trying to start again automatically or turn the power to the controller off. You don't want it starting on you unexpectedly. We've reached the end of our installation guide. If you need any support or have any questions, anything is not clear, give us a phone call. We are just a call away, 1-877-510-6807. Be sure to check the USB drive that came with the generator. Lots of great information on the engine, the alternator, the controller. All your questions should be answered by documents on there, but if you're stuck, give us a call. We're always here to help. Thank you for watching.